Hello and welcome. I'm Joven Johnson. 2023 is over and it is natural to look back at what happened over the last 365 days. What were those things that left you in just utter disbelief? It was a tough job to narrow them down for this production, but here are just 10 of the biggest stories from 2023. First up, Stocks and Securities Limited scandal. Arguably the story of the year, financial crimes investigators are still trying to determine how over 200 accounts at the investment firm were allegedly defrauded of almost $4 billion. The Gleaner broke the news on January 12 that track and field legend Usain Bolt was among the victims of the alleged fraud. But no, that I say that you say more is not broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not broke, but it, it was it's definitely put a damp on me. You understand? It was for my future. My body knows uh, three kids. I'm still looking out for my parents and I still want to live very well. Client relationship manager Gene and Panton is the only person charged in the case so far. The government came in for heaps of criticisms after the Gleaner revealed that the regulator, the Financial Services Commission, flagged SSL years ago for a culture of non-compliance and mismanagement of client funds. Many were left alarmed that SSL kept operating despite a documented history of breaches and poor financial management. Next, constitutional reform controversy. The government unveiled a committee tasked with driving the constitutional reform process. That includes Jamaica removing the British monarch as the country's head of state. However, very early in its work, the committee was rocked by public confidence issues after it was criticized for not being open with its deliberations and for appearing to have made decisions before consultations with Jamaicans. The opposition PNP has insisted that it will not support the removal of the monarch without the simultaneous removal of the UK's Privy Council as the country's final court of appeal. Next on the list, the DPP retirement age extension controversy. The opposition People's National Party has sought a court declaration that the government pushed through an amendment to the constitution to extend the retirement age for the Director of Public Prosecutions for what it claims to be an improper purpose. The amendment meant that Paula Llewellyn, who was due to retire in September when she turned 63, could stay on for another two years. She was originally due to retire in 2020 when she turned 60 but she received a three-year extension. The constitution then only allowed one extension. The retirement age for the Auditor General was also extended to 65. We have a bit of sports. Sharika Jackson at the World Athletics Championships, the Reggae Girls and the Sunshine Girls. Summer 2023 was dominated by some outstanding sports performances by national representatives. Sprinter Sharika Jackson was in the best form of her life this past season. She captured the gold medal at the Budapest World Athletics Championships in the 200 meters, clocking a personal best 21.41 seconds for the second fastest time ever by a female in the event. She finished second in the 100 meters final in Budapest and closed out her season with a Diamond League sprint double. She ended the year on a high as a finalist for the World Athlete of the Year Award and as a nominee for the Jamaica Female Athlete of the Year Award. And Jamaica's senior netball team, the Sunshine Girls, put on a dazzling display to win bronze at the Netball World Cup. The Reggae Girls, Jamaica's senior women's football team, played in their second consecutive FIFA Women's World Cup and became the first regional team to advance to the knockout stages of the global showpiece. Next, the Beryllium Attacks. Courier company Beryllium dominated headlines in 2023 for the frequency of attacks on its teams across the country. Many of the more than seven incidents happened as the security guards tried to restock automated banking machines. One of the major incidents involved an attack in Portmore in March. Criminals made off with $23 million in that incident. Jamaica struck by massive 5.6 earthquake in October. It was the talk of the country for days. The massive 5.6 magnitude earthquake that brought the country to a halt on October 30. Panic spread throughout the capital city Kingston and other parts of Jamaica, shaken by arguably the most significant earthquake the country has experienced in three decades. This house in Portland was among several buildings that were affected. This is a house in content in Hope in Portland was damaged by an earthquake earlier. Now, it was a three-story house, and now it has been transformed into a two-story house. 
with significant structural damage. The aftermath of the quake included concerns about why the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management took more than six hours after the quake to address the country. Our next major story was Marissa Dalrymple Philibert resigning as Speaker. Marissa Dalrymple Philibert joined the list of public servants in Jamaica who've had to resign after damaging allegations from investigative bodies. Mrs. Dalrymple Philibert stepped down in September after an Integrity Commission report accused her of lying and not declaring that she owned a Mercedes-Benz motor car for which she was collecting travel benefits. She said she did not recall that she owned the car which was sold in 2022, months after she told the Commission that she did not own the vehicle. The case is now before the courts. Juliet Holness, the Member of Parliament for St. Andrew East Rural and wife of Prime Minister Andrew Holness, was elected Speaker with support from the Opposition. The Integrity Commission needs to get its act together. This demonstrates bias, yes. Yes. malice yes. and prejudice. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Our next story, government members lash the Integrity Commission. 2023 was also the year that senior lawmaker and Justice Minister Delroy Chuck made this declaration about Jamaica's single anti-corruption agency, the Integrity Commission. The Commission has demonstrated a certain bias, yes. a certain unfairness, yes. which demonstrates that this Integrity Commission lacks integrity. Yes. That was the peak of attacks on the Integrity Commission by members of the government who were peeved over how the Commission handled a report that flagged Prime Minister Andrew Holness for alleged conflict of interest. The investigation report released February slammed the Prime Minister over the award of a contract to a business partner while he was Minister of Education between 2007 and 2008. Two days after the report was released, the Commission released a ruling which said no charges should be brought against Mr. Holness. Civil society groups, including the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, accused the Integrity Commission of undermining the office of the Prime Minister with how it released the information. A tweet of an overseas news report by the Commission's Executive Director, Greg Christie, led to calls for him to resign. The controversy became a political issue, with Government Minister Everard Warmington proposing changes that would weaken the authority of the Commission. Mr. Holness later urged his team members to calm down. You should not engage in a political cascas, because that is how it is emerging between the parliament and a body that reports to the parliament. We shouldn't do that. The Integrity Commission remained a talking point after it disclosed in July that it was investigating six members of the parliament for alleged illicit enrichment. We're getting closer to the end. Now to the case of the murder of Philip Paulwell's daughter and her mother. It's the case that rocked Jamaica. On September 10, it was reported that 27-year-old Tashina Patterson and her 10-month-old daughter Saraya Paulwell were abducted from their home in St. Andrew on September 9. They were never seen again. Baby Saraya was the daughter of lawyer Philip Paulwell, a PNP member of parliament and leader of opposition business in the House of Representatives. A month after they went missing, the police confirmed that Miss Patterson and her baby were shot dead and then burned. The alleged mastermind is Leoda Bradshaw, a member of the U.S. Navy who also shares a child with Mr. Paulwell. Charges in relation to the investigations have been preferred as followed. Leoda Vanessa Bradshaw, 34 years old, petty officer in the U.S. Navy. She was charged with two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of conspiracy to kidnapping, two counts of kidnapping, two counts of murder. Roland Lloyd Balfour, 30 years old, assistant graphic designer of 67 Commission Road, Kingston 2. He was charged with two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of conspiracy to kidnapping, misprison of felon. Roshane Miller, 29 years old, AC technician of 1B Camperdown Road, Kingston 16. He was charged with two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of conspiracy to kidnapping, and misprison of felon. Richard Brown, OC Richie, OC Gorilla, 31 years old, graphic designer of 2 Camden Road, Kingston 16. He was charged with two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of conspiracy to kidnapping, 
and two counts of kidnapping. The DPP has obtained a voluntary bill and the case will be taken directly to the Supreme Court. A fifth suspect was picked up on December 28. Still on crime, one of the biggest gang trials in the Caribbean, the Klansman Wan Don Gang trial, came to an end in October. The trial started with 33 accused persons in September 2021. In the end, 15 were convicted, including the leader, 38-year-old Andre Blackman Bryan. He was sentenced to 39 years in prison. In late December, the police disclosed that the Spanish town-based Klansman gang, which has two factions, was responsible for over 800 murders since 2014. Next on our list, and this was a really big one, big salary hikes for the political directorate. The Andrew Holness administration faced one of the most devastating cases of public backlash in 2023 over the massive salary increases granted to members of the political directorate under a controversial public sector compensation reform program. We're talking about increases of more than 200% for councillors, members of parliament, cabinet ministers and the leader of the opposition. Although Prime Minister Andrew Holness later exempted his office from the increase, there was no general rollback. So yes, the salary increases were significant, 200%, and I, it's a shocking amount. But based upon objective evaluation, it would have been even higher. And we decided to bring it down to what would not compromise the logic of the compensation system. And the logic of the compensation system is that you want to align your compensation with responsibility. Traditional media, social media, and even the streets were flooded with complaints. I don't know who is evaluating these politicians. I don't know who gave them the right to give themselves a raise of 200 to 300%. But we, the Jamaican people, say it is undeserved, it is very disrespectful, and it is very inconsiderate, and it is blatant theft. I'm not saying they should get anything, but I think it's exorbitant and that they need to roll it back. I also think that the timing is really, really bad. The reality is this, that we are losing our nurses, we are losing our people who are in the teaching profession, they're going into other things or they're migrating. Mm -hmm. And it is going to totally ruin our entire country. So it's not just about the dollar amount, it's about the percentage. I can only get 20%, why can you get 200? In other finance-related news, there was a massive 44% hike in the minimum wage, the biggest increase in history, partly to cushion the period of high inflation that took root post-COVID-19 and amid global economic turmoil. Jamaica also recorded the lowest unemployment rate in history, 4.5%. We now have to squeeze just a mention of the Crab Circle debacle and how one woman's unsanitary actions, relieving herself behind a stall while serving customers, led to the weeks-long closure of the popular food spot at Hero's Circle in Kingston. The location is now reopened with bathroom facilities. There you have it, 10 of the biggest stories in Jamaica in 2023, plus one bonus item. Their impact is likely to spill over into 2024. So, stay tuned to The Gleaner Online. I'm Joven Johnson. Thanks for watching.